Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I hope Green Lantern makes a cameo in the Justice League film. I'm your host, Aris Quinones. With the Defenders series hitting Netflix this weekend, there's no better time to talk about the history of the Defenders. So let's do just that. The first thing you must know about the Defenders is that their history isn't as elaborate as some may think. They first appeared in Marvel Feature Issue 1 and were created by Roy Thomas. But let's jump into their origin to see how this team came to be. The origin of the Defenders is a little complicated in the sense that it didn't all take place in the same title. It actually started with Doctor Strange issue 183, Submariner 22, and The Incredible Hulk issue 126. But due to the Doctor Strange title being cancelled in the middle of a story arc, Roy was forced to resolve said story and other comics he was writing. So we had Doctor Strange team up with the Submariner and the Hulk to defend the Earth from the Undying Ones and their leader called the Nameless One. But if he's called the Nameless One, isn't that technically his name? Then in Submariners issue 34 and 35, Namor gets help from the Hulk and the Silver Surfer in order to stop a potentially destructive weather machine. During this process, they also inadvertently end an evil dictator's rule on a small island. Not a bad accident. At least I'd say so. So they confronted the US military guard who was guarding the machine, but the officer wasn't too keen on letting Namor scientists check the machine out to see if it really didn't pose a threat. And when they didn't oblige, Namor decided to use force, causing the army to call the Avengers for help. Thor, Iron Man, and Goliath then come to fight Hulk, Silver Surfer, and Namor, who end up being called the Titans 3. So think of the Titans 3 as the pre-Defenders team name. In the end, they settled their differences, stopping the fight between the Avengers and the Titans 3, and allowing them to go their separate ways. Now all of what I just said is important because it led to the formation of the first Defenders team in Marvel Feature Issue 1. In the issue, Strange is visiting his dying foe, Yondroth, when he is warned by the Techno Wizard that he has created a machine that will destroy the Earth in only five hours after it's activated. To stop this from happening, Strange gathers two people he had teamed up with before to save the world. Namor and the Hulk. The three of them find the device hidden in a lighthouse in Maine, but even their combined strength can't stop it. Strange then decides, maybe we can't stop it, but I can postpone it. He uses a spell to slow the progression of time around the lighthouse to a snail's pace, making it so it would be centuries before the Omegatron finally counts down to its final moments. The three then go their separate ways, but Strange says if they ever need to come together again, they would call themselves the Defenders. As he said, it's a fitting name for such a group. So that's how the founding members of the Defenders came together. While some people think that the Silver Surfer was a founding member, he didn't join the team until Defenders Issue 2, although he did help out in the Titans 3 days. Anyway, as we all know, superhero teams always start off with a handful of members, but eventually expand and become way bigger. I mean, just look at the Avengers and the Justice League. Pretty much every hero in their respective universes have been a member of one of those teams at one point or another. And the Defenders are no different, not nearly on the scale of the Avengers and Justice League, but they have had quite a few members on their roster over the years, like Nighthawk, Luke Cage, Valkyrie, Red Guardian, Hellcat, and Daredevil, just to name a few. Basically, the Defenders have always more or less been a team of outsiders who are misunderstood and didn't fit in on other teams, like the Avengers. They're actually known as a kind of non-team team, if that makes any sense, because they team up, but they don't like to consider themselves a team. Anyway, story arcs. <laughs> A really cool Defenders story is the eight-part crossover series Avengers Defenders War. In the story, Loki and Dormammu tricked the Defenders into recovering the evil eye so that Dormammu could finally unleash his evil onto the whole world. You remember Dormammu, right? You've come to die. Anyway, Loki realizes that he had made a mistake because now he fears that Dormammu may also conquer Asgard. So being the god of mischief that he is, and without talking to Dormammu, he tricks the Avengers into fighting the Defenders so that the Avengers would stop the Defenders from recovering the evil eye. What eye? The f a tactic that ultimately works. But throughout the years, the team has gone through many changes. The most dramatic change being when writer Demaryius felt that the series needed a change. So he retired the series after Defenders issue 124 and launched the new Defenders, because we all know that adding the word new makes everything better. All joking aside, the series was drastically changed after this. Original members Doctor Strange, Hulk, Namor, and Silver Surfer were forced to leave the team because of an alien prophecy that said the four of them would be responsible for destroying the world. That's messed up, right? I mean, they made the team what it was. Man, that sucks! Anyway, the team was then reformed as an official superhero team with government clearance and all. Because remember, prior to this, they never considered themselves an official team. During the final issue of the New Defenders, which took place in issue 152, everyone seemingly dies in the battle with the Dragon of the Moon. All the mutants on the team that lived would then go on to join X-Factor. Then in 1990, the original Defenders trio of Doctor Strange, Hulk, and Namor would return in the Incredible Hulk issues 370 and 371. It was also revealed that the alien prophecy was a lie, so the trio then rejoined with 
Silver Surfer in a story rightfully called The Return of the Defenders. Jumping forward to 1993, Marvel decided to revamp Defenders again, and this time called them the Secret Defenders. This incarnation of the team unofficially first appeared in Doctor Strange issue 50, and again in Fantastic Four issue 374. They were then officially introduced in Secret Defenders issue 1. The whole premise of the series is really cool, or at least the original premise of the series was, with Doctor Strange organizing various teams of heroes for certain missions, with him as the leader. Members of his teams included Wolverine, Darkhawk, Spider-Woman, Spider-Man, Hulk, Ghost Rider, and many more. The series eventually abandoned this method of a revolving door roster and was cancelled by issue 25. Maybe they should have stuck with the revolving door roster. At least I think they should have. Then in 2001, the Defenders reunited for Defenders Volume 2, which lasted 12 issues. In 2005, Marvel gave us a Defenders 5-issue miniseries that featured Doctor Strange attempting to reunite the original four Defenders to battle Dormammu and Umar. It was actually a funny series as the team spent most of their time arguing. Then in 2008, we got The Last Defenders, which gave us a new Defenders lineup as a result of the Superhuman Registration Act implemented in the first Civil War story. Nighthawk wanted the team to be made up of previous defenders like Hellcat and Devil Slayer, but Tony Stark was like, yeah, no. So we made the decision to select other heroes for the team. A year later in 2009, we got the Offenders. State of Florida has asked us to, so is our sexual crimes to you. We were bad, but now we're good. Into your okay, that was a joke. Don't send the mouse after me, Marvel. The real offenders are a team of supervillains that the Red Hulk put together. The team consisted of Red Hulk, Baron Mordo, Terax the Tamer, and Tiger Shark. In the 2011 storyline Fear Itself, Doctor Strange formed a new Defenders team with the daughter of the Hulk Lyra, Namor, Silver Surfer, and Loa. Then in December of 2011, we got yet another Defenders series by Matt Fraction. In this incarnation, the team consisted of Doctor Strange, Red She-Hulk, Silver Surfer, Namor, and Iron Fist. The series followed the reunion of the Defenders until 2013 when we got the Fearless Defenders, which consisted of yet another new team led by Valkyrie and Misty Knight. See, I told you it changed a lot. But this, my friends, brings us all the way to the most current incarnation of the Defenders in the comic simply called The Defenders. Which of course was made to be just like the Netflix Defender series that consists of Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist. So for some of you, it may come as a surprise to learn that the Netflix Defender series is very different from the comics. As the core members of the Defenders in the comics are Doctor Strange, Namor, Hulk, and Silver Surfer. But it's part of the MCU, so they can do whatever they want. I have to say, in this case, it makes sense for the Defenders to be more of a street-level team and not a group of super powerful beings like Silver Surfer and Doctor Strange. The Defenders have a wide range of powers, as the roster is made up of several different characters. But with Doctor Strange, Namor, Hulk, and Silver Surfer as common mainstays on the team, that should tell you they're one of the strongest teams in all of comics. You have the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange, the Hulk, who is arguably the strongest hero in all of comics, Namor the Submariner, another one of Marvel's heavy hitters, and the Silver Surfer who possesses the freaking Power Cosmic. If you don't know why that's impressive, check out our What is the Power Cosmic episode. What I'm saying is, traditionally, the team is incredibly powerful, and I only mentioned four of its members. Just imagine how powerful this team could be with all of its members. As far as villains go, the team faces pretty much whoever they need to face at any given time. But notable villains would be Satanish, an extra-dimensional demon who is thought to be the creation of Darmammu, and often seen as an ally of Mephisto. Then there's the Androth. He's primarily a Doctor Strange villain, and is the whole reason for the Defenders' formation. Then you have Noel the Living Darkness. Noel is a horrible monster born from the despair of an extinct race. The last one I'm going to mention is, of course, Darmammu. Darmammu is the ruler of the Dark Dimension and incredibly powerful. He uses his power to rule and conquer other universes and dimensions. Also, he hates bargaining. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. What is happening? I had to. Read Defenders Masterworks Volume 1, Defenders Masterworks Volume 2, Defenders Volume 1 by Matt Fraction, Defenders Volume 2 by Matt Fraction, and Avengers Defenders War. That should be enough to get you guys started. I want to be healthy, but I'm way too busy to get to the store and buy ingredients. Mate, what? You mean lazy? I am not lazy. I have a yeah. lot of editing yeah. going on. I want to get a much. I want to be healthy, but I am way too busy to go to the store to get all the ingredients to make a nutritious and delicious smoothie. Enter Daily Harvest. Oh, magic. Oh my, that's terrible. What do you mean? That is not terrible. That is production value. Daily Harvest delivers perfectly portioned smoothies and ready to go cups right to your front door or desk. So what do you say we pick one and get the smoothie? Oh, magic. Now let's get those ingredients in there and blend it up. It's so easy. Man, delicious. Almost like it was made from a team of chefs and nutritionists. 
Daily Harvest has 14 different blends of smoothies, not to mention other products. Go to daily-harvest.com forward slash variant or click the link in the description and use the code variant to get three free smoothies. First up for Wednesday, August 16th, we have Spider-Man 2 Issue 2. The mystery of the other Miles Morales thickens, but our Spider-Man may need to hit the pause button because Taskmaster is in town. Here we have Totally Awesome Hulk Issue 22. The Weapon X program's twisted head scientists have finally completed their magnum opus. Now Batch H is awake and he's mad as hell. Now we have Green Arrow Issue 29. Black Canary and Green Arrow's missions converge into two cities, one in Seattle and the other in Gotham. And finally, we have Dark Knight's Metal Issue 1. This is it, guys, DC's huge summer event written and drawn by the all-star creative team of Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. You're not going to want to miss this Batman-centric event that involves almost the whole DCU. That's going to do it for today, my comic conrads, but remember to click the subscribe button and then hit the bell next to it so you're notified when we post new videos. Also, be sure to head over to VariantComics.com for a crap ton of additional content. But I'll see you lovely people next time when I talk about all things comics.